Cure. Ein gutes Vierteljahrhundert hat die englische Kultband bereits auf dem Buckel. Doch von Müdigkeitserscheinungen kann kein Rät sein. Konzerte und Festivals gehören immer noch zu ihren absoluten Highlights. Aber was haben die Vorzeigen Wave Groove die Song Ministry of Rock verloren? Because it's called Monsters of Rock, I think. <lacht> I just wanted to see us on a poster that said Monsters of Rock. <lacht> Um, I don't know, I mean, I think because the festivals that we're doing this summer are split pretty much down the middle of um, the festivals that we more traditionally play, the darker sort of festivals, the more sort of, uh, you know, and um, we're doing a few that are more kind of traditional, like this one's a much more kind of, a bit more mainstream, so it's just the experience of doing it, really. There might be some people in the crowd, obviously there'll be a lot of people in the crowd who've never seen The Cure before, and I'm hoping that just one of them will go away and like us, you know. Davor muss der Frontman Robert Smith keine Angst haben. Trotzdem zerbricht er sich aber immer wieder den dubierten Kopf, wenn es um ihre Konzerte geht. Doing concerts on a, on a show day for me, everything revolves around the time we're on stage. Nothing else matters. This doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's like if we're good on stage, I've enjoyed the day. If we're bad on stage, I, I hate everything about the day. Und etwas, was der Cure-Sänger auch nicht wirklich mag, sind Interviews geben. Generally, I, I don't really enjoy interviews. I, I um, only because it's, uh, I don't know, it just makes me really self-conscious even after all this time. I, n I don't really very often enjoy other people, seeing other people being interviewed and I feel myself being as boring as they are. So it's, you know, it's, I think the only time interviews work for me is um, when I spend a few hours with someone and it's actually more like a conversation than an interview, the sort of backs and forward stuff. I think festivals are different. I agree to do it because it's, um, it's, I like the idea of just being at the festival on the day and doing things that I wouldn't normally do. So. Da haben wir von Viva Suisse ja gerade noch mal Glück gehabt. Außerdem hat sich bei dem Interview herausgestellt, dass der als introvertiert geltende Sänger in Wirklichkeit gar nicht so schüch ist. I've never, I've never tried to give the impression that I'm shy. Because I, I think anyone that ever does that, that does what I do, is, is fake. You can't be shy and do this. It's ridiculous. I know people that are genuinely shy and they can't talk. You know, it's, um, I think there's a difference between being shy and being quiet. I think I'm a naturally a quiet person. Which again, it's, it's strange that I do what I do and I'm quiet. But I actually, the side of me that gets on stage and sings is like a weird part of my personality, really. Und genau das lieben die Fans so am Robert Smith. Bis heute ist er das Idol von Millionen und bis heute teilen sich Hardcore-Fans wie ihr Vorbild. It, it is weird, yeah. But it's, it's, I suppose because of the fact that it's gone on for so long, it's actually become a, str like a strange version of normality for me. When it very first all started happening, I, I was at an age and probably of a disposition. I did find it quite weird, like too weird, really. I find it quite difficult to cope with. But um, but now it's I just find it's, it's very flattering. And um, the strangest thing is like how much younger than me everyone is that does it. And it's like that's why I bought I, was, I bought this to wear for the festivals. Because it's like that way people say, well, is it? No, it's not. Geschminktes Gesicht und topierte Haar. 25 Jahre im gleichen Look rumlaufen, ist das eher ein Wille oder ein Müssen? I think the reason why I've been able to continue on for so long doing this is that the reasons why I started doing it and how I am are, are, have pretty much stayed the same, really. I, um, I, still, I still kind of act the same and, and talk the same, do the same things and look pretty much the same when I'm at home. It's just an extension of like what I'm like. It would be impossible for me to... Um, To pretend to be me for this long, I'd be insane, you know, it's like... Wer noch mehr über die gespaltene Persönlichkeit will wissen oder warum aus dem Robert Smith fast ein professioneller Fußballspieler geworden wäre, der bleibt dran, denn in wenigen Minuten geht's gerade weiter mit The Cure. Robert Smith, der Frontmann von The Cure, ist bekannt dafür, dass er für viele eine geheimnisvolle, ja schon fast eine suspekte Person darstellt. Wie aber stuft er sich selber ein? I'm reading a book at the moment called The View from Nowhere by a, a philosopher called Nagel. And it's, all, it's actually about, that's the question it poses, is how do you ever know 
who you really are, what constitutes the, the you that you believe you are. So I'm in a very awkward position at the moment because um, I'm questioning the, the actual makeup of my own personality. So I, this is a very long-winded way of saying I'm not really sure. I find it... Um, I'm in a situation where I do two very distinct things and they're both at odds with each other because I am, like I said, I'm actually quite quiet at home. I live quite a reasonably normal life apart from the fact that I don't work. And yet what I do, what I really enjoy doing creatively is something that draws a huge amount of attention to myself. So there's a kind of um, a strange um, paradox, I suppose, at the heart of who I think I am. So I don't know really. But I'm not ever really that, that worried. It used to bother me a lot more. But I'm thinking of... I probably um, haven't got enough time left to find out. So I just get on with enjoying the parts that I enjoy. You know. Und man kann es kaum glauben, aber der Röbi hat früher sogar mal Profifußballer wollen werden. I was lucky to, um, I was pretty good at football and I really enjoyed it. I like the team spirit. And, you know. I mean, what the Cure do is, is, in a funny way, it is sort, there are similarities actually, because it's a team kind of thing, although people usually just think of me and they, I do the interviews and everything. It's always very much there's, there's a number of us all trying to do the same thing. So it's that sense of community. I, I, I really liked playing football because I like the way that I could express myself non-verbally and music was another way of me doing that so this is really cool Tja, und wer jetzt denkt, dass für den verkappten Shoot-Profi ein Welt zusammengebrochen ist, wo Brasilien an der vergangenen WM England geschlagen hat, der irrt gründlich I, I actually, I love football more than I love England so I wanted Brazil to win well, because Brazil are the best football team, so Fußball für den Robert Smith wird das wohl immer das Thema bleiben. I do with my um, some of my younger nephews, the ones that are about this this time that uh, like I can still beat, but I'm getting too old, I'm afraid. Können wir öppen es bit Angst vor dem älter werden muss? When I was when I became 30, I had a complete breakdown. I really hated becoming 30, but becoming 40 was actually. I think one, once I got to 30, I was already bold. <laughs> so I never thought I'd get to 30. So getting to 40 was just another age, really. I mean, I wish I, you know, I, I, I've become, I'm becoming physically aware of getting older. Recovery times are really long, but, but um, it's, you know, I try and see the positive side of it, the balance between actually what I've experienced and what I know now against how bad I feel in the morning. <laughs> it's just like, at the moment it's about kind of parity, but I'm sure as the years go by, kind of the balance tips the other way. Wake up, wake up, wake up, My trick to stay fit, I don't, I'm not fit, I don't. Um, I, I'm, I'm lucky that I've got a natural stamina because otherwise I have not. I mean, I really have no idea how I'm able to. We played, the, did our first one two nights ago in Athens, and it was about 90 degrees of heat when we went on stage. We played for two and a half hours, and at the end, I felt absolutely shattered. But, but really, it's just adrenaline. Actually, I just, I really forget that I'm doing it. You know, it's not like I dance on stage. You know, <laughs> I do sing. It's not that hard, anyway. Im letzten Teil vom heutigen Open Air Special erfahren ihr, warum sich der Cure vor kurzem fast getrennt hätte oder warum auch schon mal ein Helikopter mit ihrer Bühne schon gelandet ist. Mehr dazu nach ein paar Clips. Jahre The Cure. Nach Veränderungen in der Bandbesetzung und unzähligen Auf und Abs sind in der Presse bis heute Trainingsabsichten oder Solopläne vom Frontmann Robert Smith kursiert. Alles nur Gerüchte oder wahre Stories? The solo album part is true. I've done that. But that won't be released for a while. Because The Cure are going to do another album. I did, we were going to stop in, um, in 97 when we did an uh, album called Galore, which is like a singles album, and we were actually going to stop. But then I wanted to make one last album and that turned into Blood Flowers and I was so happy with how it turned out, it actually made me want to be in The Cure again, so it sort of backfired really. And I'm, I'm, I actually think I have more, I get more enjoyment out of this now than I ever have done in my life, so I don't really want to stop at the moment. Was genau hat der Röbi dann zum Weitermachen bewegt? I, I think it wasn't just one thing, it was a series of things that happened one after the other. Everything from um, 
having a lot of arguments within the band about why we were doing it. And also, most importantly for me, was me knowing why I was doing it. I'd just become one of those people I always hated when I was young. It was just in a band. I didn't really know why I was in a band, you know. I didn't think we played very well. I thought we were just, you know. We did festivals in 97, well, in fact, in 98 as well. And I thought they were, um, that was probably the low point of The Cure's life, really. Because we were just turning up playing festivals. And I, and I was getting drunk and I had no reason to do it. It was just because I wanted to be on stage. And so I sort of just had a rethink, really, about what was important. Because I it was 40 and... Um, 1999 and I felt it was a good time for me to think about what I should do for the next 10 years of my life you know, so. and I ended up being quite happy about being me still so. Außerdem, wer wird schon all die tollen Erfahrungen und Anekdoten missen, die bei so einem Bandleben passieren? That, we played Glastonbury in uh, I think it was the, we, we played there three times, I think it was 1990, and a helicopter, someone was uh, collapsed at the front, and a helicopter actually had to land, and we were supposed to stop playing in order for it all to happen, and I didn't understand what they were, this person came and started saying something to me, and I had no idea what they were saying, I just couldn't hear what they were saying, and um, they were warning me that a helicopter was about to come down, and we were doing shake for shake, and this, suddenly this, helicopter started to descend. That was pretty weird because I thought I was imagining the whole thing. <laughs> it's like so stories machen doch der Band wie auch den Fans immer wieder Freude und zum Schluss hat uns der Robert dann auch noch versichert, dass man sich um ihn oder um The Cure keine Sorgen muss machen. But I'd, I'd never stop being in a band. That's one thing I know. I, I much prefer having people around me that I can talk to. It always goes back to that. I, being a solo artist has no attraction for me at all because I'd be on my own. I'd be really miserable, you know. Right now, I'd have to go back to the caravan and sit on my own, you know. <laughs> Whereas I can go back and have a drink with my friends, you know.